Hello, welcome to your daily briefing, December the 16th, 2018. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for another day. You continue to show us day by day the path that we should follow, and you warn us concerning the events that are taking place around us. We ask that today you will do the same, and that our strength might be increased, our faith grown stronger, and we will walk according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we have been looking in some of our past programs at the the impact that the evangelical movement has had upon the United States of America. Um, but what we have not really been looking at too closely has been the impact that the evangelical movement in America has been having on the rest of the world. Now, we have been warned in Revelation chapter 13 that the United States of America will cause the whole world to worship the first beast. And usually when we see that, we think in terms of the economic power of America, the military power of America, and its political influence. We have not given too much thought to its religious impact on the rest of the world. Today I'd like to begin to take a look at some of that. And there's an article found in The Guardian, the British newspaper, The Guardian website, the article was published back on Friday the 6th in November 2009. And the writer of the article is Lizzie Davis. The last name is spelt D-A-V-I-E-S, Lizzie Davies. The title of the article is For Secular and Catholic France, A Shock to the System, The Rise of the Evangelicals. Let me read that again for you. For Secular and Catholic France, a shock to the system, the rise of the evangelicals. Here's that article. As the piano strikes up, the congregation sways, palms to the ceiling, fists in the air, murmurs of hallelujah punctuating the music. Pastor Frank Lafeletre, besuited and bathed in the spotlight of his podium, intones into a microphone. Let out the words that are in your hearts, he urges. His whispers crescendo to booming rhetoric. Behind him, emblazoned in gold letters, are the words, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, eternally. As evangelical services go, this gathering on a rainy Sunday afternoon is nothing unusual. In countless churches around the United States and many other countries, it would be a sample, a stable means of Christian worship. But this is not the American Bible Belt. It is the Church of Paris, Bastille. And this congregation is just one of a growing number of evangelical communities spreading through France and prospering in spite of its staunchly secular and Catholic traditions. From a post-war population of around 50,000, French evangelicals are now estimated to number between 450,000 to 500,000. According to the Evangelical Federation of France, the number of churches has risen from 800 in 1970 to over 2,200 today. Now we remember the article was written in the year 2009. Continuing. This week, the boom made headlines when thousands of evangelicals, who are estimated to make up two-thirds of the country's practice in Protestants, descended on Strasbourg to turn the 500th anniversary, anniversary of Calvin's birth into a mass media-covered event. It was not something even the most hopeful of believers could have prayed for. For La Fatrete, whose church is part of the World Assembly of God's Fellowship, the largest global Pentecostal denomination, the growth is reflected within the bare, shabby walls of the Paris Bastille. In the three years he has been pastor there, he said the congregation has gone from around 250 to 350 or 400. Do they come ever so often or without fail every Sunday? Every Sunday, he said firmly. On paper, France would seem 
one of the least likely places for this branch of Christianity to gain a foothold. For centuries, Protestantism was the embattled minority in a country Catholics liked to call the eldest daughter of the church because of its strong ties to Rome. The minority that exists now still makes it just 3% of the population. More importantly, though, ever since France harnessed popular discontent with the influence of Catholicism and wrote a separation of church and state into the Constitution, the French Republic has worshipped at the altar of the church the concept of a secular state. The gradual emergence of evangelicals as a force has, therefore, raised eyebrows with some critics questioning whether their beliefs are compatible with the values of a secular republic. Not only are they known in France for speaking in towns, born-again conversions and a zeal denounced by some as manipulative proselytism, they are associated in many minds with a politically powerful movement in the U.S. religious right. Jean-Francois Colosimo, a writer and religious historian, provoked a furious backlash from evangelicals when, after it emerged that France's intelligence services had launched a census of the domestic population, he said everything in France would seem to ban a political religious mixture. But this kind of worship is fragile and temptations are present, a direct reference to the evangelicals. These arguments are rejected as irrelevant by French believers. Just because they have the same faith as the Americans and a similar style of worship, they say, it does not mean they share the same politics. Daniel Lecce, vice president of the French evangelical movement, emphasized the need to recognize the European roots of the present-day movement. French Protestants and evangelicals fought for religion to be separate from the state in the belief that la city is a good thing. We do not mix the two. It is impossible to say whether French evangelicals are more left or right wing, he said. Sebastian Fath, a specialist in the spread of evangelicalism, agrees that there remains a clear distinction among French evangelicals between politics and religion. But according to Henry Tinks, a religious commentator, issues such as abortion and homosexuality are creeping up into the agenda. These themes have been traditionally foreign to the evangelical culture in France. You find them now in evangelical networks, which do remain nonetheless minorities, he said. The fear is that with its combination of doctrinal dom dogma, and staunch moral beliefs, the movement could yet become a potent, if minority, political force. Sitting in the Paris Bastille after the pastor's Sunday service, Sylvain Vautier, 25 years old, an engineer, dismissed any idea that his church was a copy of the U.S. model. It was, he said, much more balanced. Yet in some ways, Vautier embodies the zeal and dogma that leads many French people to regard his faith with suspicion. He bases his faith and worldview on a correct interpretation of the Bible and admits that interacting with non-believers can be difficult. When you're talking to someone, even on a professional basis, there's a difference, he said. You think, I'm saved and you're not. It creates a bit of a gulf. Now that article published in The Guardian, is showing how the influence of American evangelical movement has spread to Europe. And I want you to know that this is not just France. Remember what we said about Revelation chapter 13 and verse 12? Another article found in The Church Times, published the 19th of February, 2016, with the topic, A Quiet Revolution, Not an Evangelical Takeover. Again, the topic, A Quiet Revolution, Not an Evangelical Takeover, says this. Something has changed in the Church of England. It is a radical change, but one that has not attracted much comment. 
I was alerted to it when the Right Reverend Martin Snow was nominated as the next Bishop of Leicester, A diocese with a long tradition of liberal leadership has appointed someone with an evangelical outlook and the youngest diocesan in the church. This is not an isolated example. Among the five senior diocesans, Canterbury, Durham, Winchester and York are clearly evangelical and in London we have a traditional rather than liberal Catholic. In the next tier we find Chester, Bristol, Birmingham, Coventry, Sheffield, Carlisle, Petersburg and Leeds and then include at least Blackburn, Bath and Wells, Guildford, Southwell and Nottingham, Rochester and Europe, and you have a formidable representation of evangelicals in the House of Bishops, one without precedent in modern times. So let me pause again to say that the article we first read, saying how the evangelical influence of the United States of America is taking over what's happening in France, and now we're looking at London, England. Continuing, it is important to qualify and clarify what this means. Bishops are famously reluctant to own theological labels for understandable reasons. They are, after all, there is there to function as a focus of unity around the church's teachings, not to serve as point scoring for particular traditions or signs of shallow Trumpalism. The presence of so many evangelicals will not satisfy the extremes either. Liberals might worry about a threat to the broad church. Conservative evangelicals will wonder why it remains so broad, apocryphally asking of consecrations. Is that the service where they remove your backbone? The reasons for this change are deep, and within the evangelical tradition reach back to at least 50 years. At the first National Evangelical Anglican Congress at Kiel, in 1967, a significant question was whether evangelicals, who still had a sense of being a beleaguered minority, should stay within the Church of England at all. The Reverend Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, the pastor of Westminster Chapel, had said no, they should come out from among her and form a pure, uncompromised evangelical church. The Reverend Dr. Scott, Rector of All Souls, Langham Place, urged evangelicals to stay, engage, and effect change from within. Dr. Stott won the day, although his position then still does not convince everyone. Evangelicals are not always good at compromise. At the second conference in Nottingham in 1977, the Reverend Dr. Anthony Thistleton, urged a second kind of engagement by evangelicals with scholarship and in particular with hermeneutics. This commitment to engage has borne remarkable fruit. In 2007, Gordon Kurt analyzed what was happening to theological traditions in ordination training and found something remarkable. Thirty years earlier, evangelicals had accounted for about 30% of ordained and ordained ministers entering training. By the time of his writing, this had changed to 70%. This was not because the numbers of evangelicals coming forward had increased, but because the number of Catholics and liberals had dropped off. All other things being equal, the tradition of ordinance in one age will become the tradition of the church's leadership in the next. Following Dr. Thistleton's urgings, evangelicals have also been active in engaging with theology. I was in the first cohort experimentally to move straight to doctoral study from ordination training, and many other evangelicals have done the same. As a result, there are evangelicals in every tradition of residential college and teaching on courses, as well as in context-based training. Evangelicals no longer stick doggedly to their traditional remit of parish ministry, but are also now area deans and archdeacons and involved in sector ministries. The one area largely untouched is that of cathedral deans. The large number of evangelical bishops is just the episcopal tip of an ecclesiastical iceberg. In the church, 
mission-shaped church marked a wash, watershed. It is now credible and even desirable to talk about mission explicitly as an Anglican in a way it had not been after 1990s. I believe that this explains why evangelical Episcopal appointments are not the result of conspiracy. Vacancy in C committees are asked for a credible commitment to mission, and evangelical candidates are given plausible answers. To work out whether this situation is likely continue, to, to continue, look at the youngest diocesans. They are in age Leicestershire, Southwell, and Nottingham, Gloucestershire, Guildford, Europe, Coventry, Chichester, Kelmford, Winchester, Ely, Leeds, Truro, Sheffield, St. Albans, and Manchester. Of these 15, 10 look evangelical to me, another two traditional Catholic, and only three more liberal. The high proportion of evangelical ordinance looks set to continue. A significant route is through youth work, and 90% of youth workers are employed by evangelical churches. Now this is a serious matter, my brother, my sister, this morning, because what you see happening here is quite a shift taking place in Europe, not just in France, but in England. And I'm sure that you remember the history of the English church. The, the, the split came about when the King of England wanted to divorce his wife and marry someone else, and the Pope wouldn't give him permission, so he decided he would break with Rome, and he became, the King became the head of the Church of England, is what they called it. But they, for the most part, remained to be embracing of the same theology they always had, which was Catholic. But notice what has happened recently. As we're seeing in these articles, the impact of the evangelical movement in the United States of America has had a direct impact upon France and England. And of course, as we shall see, as we go forward, you'll see that it is touching across the entire world. Now, what is significant about this is that when you read the, 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 the spirit of prophecy, we are told that the evangelicals or the Protestants will ultimately join hands with Catholicism. And in other places, which I will read for you next time, we are told that Catholics are surprised to see the joy with which and the seriousness with which Protestants in, in, embrace their point of view. This has been happening. And it has been happening covertly. We have spent most of our time engaged in looking at the political influence of the United States of America across the world. We have looked at the economic influence that we have. We've been looking at the, the, the arguments with China with regard to tariffs. And, and we will get to Russia once more because we have dealt with that before. But what we have not noticed, and there has not been much comment, is the influence of the evangelical movement the cultural evangelical movement. As we have said before in some of our articles, today the evangelicals are not that concerned about their theology. They are more concerned about their cultural environment, their ethnic environment. And this influence is being spread. You do recall that in one of our past articles, we took a look at the fact that the evangelicals in the United States of America are very, are very um, pleased and loving towards Vladimir Putin because of some of the laws that he has passed in his country. Cultural laws, the, the outlawing of same-sex marriage, of homosexuality, etc., etc. There has been this quiet and covert influence flowing out of the evangelical movement in the United States of America across the entire world. Which really is a fulfillment of that text which says that the United States of America will cause the rest of the world to worship the first beast. While the evangelicals are making the moves that they are, 
and pushing the agenda that they are and controlling the the House and the Senate and the White House and the Supreme Court and the justice system in the United States of America, pushing a serious agenda to turn the United States of America into a theocracy. Notice that Rome can be quite silent because the undermining of the Constitution of the United States of America, the rolling back of the freedom of conscience, liberty of conscience, is their agenda, but if they've got somebody else pushing that agenda, they need not speak. This is the fulfillment of all that God has told us. Let me just read one last paragraph for you before we close today. The same article. I wonder whether the presence of evangelicals at every level of ministry might aid this process for the church, that we recover what it means to be a reformed Catholic church. This means not being reformed and Catholic and liberal and living in different silos nor executing an evangelical takeover, but holding together our diversity by means of a reflective biblical theology shaped by insights from previous generations and informed by responsible intellectual engagement today. Whatever its pros and cons, this configuration of the church is likely to be here for some time. And what the author of this article is saying here, he says, he's saying, and his name is Reverend Dr. Ian Paul. He's an honorary assistant professor at the University of Nottingham. He is saying a coming together of these churches a reformation of itself, a joining together of these two elements that will cause the, the building of a culture that is closer to what the Bible, or rather their interpretation of what the Bible says, will be. We have been warned of this, and you and I need to understand very clearly that what God says will be, will be. The last article I read was found in the Church Times, published the 19th of February, 2016. The title of that article is A Quiet Revolution, Not an Evangelical Takeover. The first article that we read today is from The Guardian, published fi Friday the 6th of November, 2009, titled, for secular and Catholic France, a shock to the system, the rise of the evangelicals. We will continue to take a look at this because I want you to understand that the influence is strong and it is spreading across the entire world. Not just, not just the United States, not just the cabinet of the presidency, not just the justice system and the Supreme Court, but throughout the entire world. And there are other elements that are occurring that fulfill God's prophecies. Again, let me encourage you to get ready for the time to come. Ultimately, you will have to stand. And in order for you to have the kind of strength necessary to stand, Christ will have to stand with you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you continue to show us day by day the events that are taking place around us and how your word is being fulfilled. We ask that you would give us the courage and the endurance and the conviction not to be moved, but to stand with you and for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This has been your daily briefing, December the 16th. 2018.